Hi, uh, my name is Mateo de Manjo and I work for Collabra. Um, during this last month, I've been working on some vision inertial datasets or SLAM datasets, um, targeting the XR use case, in particular the a VR headset. The, they were recorded in a VR headset, the Valve Index. It's a headset that has two a pair of cameras, it's two, and it has an IMU inside, and is usually tracked by Steam VR with uh, these lighthouses, or these things over here with the with the tripods here. This and let me see how this works. Oh, okay, this is hard. There we go. And this other, this other over here. Um, those three lighthouses um, using the proprietary Steam VR. Um, tracking algorithm. I just took that tracking tracking data, used that as ground truth, recorded a couple of um, sequences in the data set that should be useful to test and are a bit more challenging than regular SLAM data sets like the EROC data sets or TUM VI data sets. Um, those data sets usually target things like drones and having data sets speci specifically tailored towards VR and AR seemed like a good idea. And it was something we were needing in the Monado project. Um, I work for the Vision Inertial component uh, for Monado that is based on Basalt, a very nice system, a Vision Inertial Odometry system from um, the TUM University, the Technical University of Munich. And yeah, this video is more or less an a way of, for me of uh, documenting the process of post-processing one of these data sets. All the recording tools are present in Monado. Um, the OpenVR tracker module uh, allows us to get uh, tracking data from OpenVR, in particular for, from SteamVR uh, for the Lighthouse. Then the IMUs are recorded from um, the reverse engineer driver, the Vibe called, it's called the Vibe driver in Monado. Uh, it has uh, IMU samples there with uh, regular hardware timestamps. And the camera frames comes through uh, the B4L2 subsystem in Linux. And those comes with specific uh, timestamps. Something uh, that is worth noting right now is that the Valve index is a very so all of this is reverse engineered. The timestamps in particular we have are not uh, synchronized in Monado. So uh, there needs to be some kind of post-processing that I am doing, in, I will be doing in this video. Um, I am leveraging some tools from Basalt and doing some uh, some tricks to use them also for different, for both for camera IMU alignment and uh, lighthouse IMU alignment. Uh, both spatial and temporal, and yeah, this video is trying to document that process. Um, in the future, I hope to also post data sets from the Windows Mix Reality uh, driver we have on Monado. Uh, those data sets should be a bit better in the sense that the camera and the AMU uh, frames, uh, the camera and the AMU samples do have the same time domain, so the timestamps are the same. For the Valve Index, uh, there is two problems. The problem of aligning the timestamps and then the problem of doing the tracking. The way uh, these datasets will be published is that I have both the different timestamps we have available in Monado. For the Lighthouse, we only have the timestamp, the current timestamps of the the current timestamps of the host, uh, since you basically request a pause for the current time, uh, that's the timestamp, the raw timestamp we we publish. Uh, then for the uh, cameras, we have the B4L2 timestamps, which uh, don't seem to align with the hardware timestamps. They don't. And then we have the IMU timestamps, which do come from the uh, hardware clock. Uh, but again, the frame timestamps and the lighthouse timestamps do not, so they are not super useful. So what we do uh, then is to 
apply a oh sorry for frame time stamps we have both the before l2 time stamps and also the arrival time the host uh, has the, the the frames available so this should be uh, very useful to implementing for implementing uh, time synchron time domain synchronization algorithms too we hope that and they, it will be useful um, but then uh, what we do to, to separate that problem into like to just try to remove that problem uh, we just apply an alignment alignment with the gyroscope of the AMU and the rotational velocities of both the lighthouse tracking uh, trajectory and the an estimated trajectory of just the camera frames. Uh, we reuse puzzled visual arometry. We run visual arometry um, on a subset of 30 seconds of each data set. And then we align uh, the estimated trajectory with the, sorry, the rotational velocity of that visual only estimated trajectory with the lighthouse, uh, sorry, with the IMU gyroscopes and we align that to get the, the time offset. Um, this process is not perfect, uh, but it should be pretty good. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the data sets uh, get processed a lot better. Uh, the, the final error is a lot better. And yeah, that's more or less the, the, the way we are doing it. Um, without further ado, I'll start the process and hopefully uh, this will be useful for anyone interested in uh, knowing how uh, the, the data sets were, how the data sets came to be. Thanks a lot, and hopefully you enjoy watching, or at least it's useful to you. Okay, so by this point, all of the data sets are recorded. Um, we're calling these Monaco data sets. We have um, each folder is prefixed with a letter. Um, this is just so that we can just identify each thing with a, with a short code, which is usually a way of doing things in datasets. Uh, sorry, in papers. To you know, you just post a table, and you want just like the, um, a simple code to show in the like you have a little space in in the in papers. So it's good to have uh, some short code. To showing the table. So um, in this case, we have all of the data sets already recorded. We have three sections. Um, those are calibration data sets. Let me see. We have calibration data sets. We have in particular <coughs> three um, camera calibration data sets and then three IMA data sets. Um, then, after everything was recorded, I took two more camera uh, calibration datasets and two IMU calibration datasets. And then, after that, I did that again. Um, in particular, you can read, uh, there is a readme in the calibration folder, explaining more or less uh, what's the difference between each of those. And <clears throat> this kind of uh, something that you will see here is that I talk about the tripods being moved. And that is because the lighthouse, uh, the three lighthouses you saw at the beginning of the video, um, those are, uh, the lighthouses are on tripods and the tripods can move. If, for example, if I hit them while they're playing, which uh, it happened. <laughs> so when that happens, uh, usually recalibrating, it's necessary to do a room setup again in general, it's in VR to be sure that everything is uh, working properly and yeah that's something to to be aware of and i just recording recorded new calibration data sets every time that happened so just in case and also there are some other that are just there for redund redundancy purposes so you can do calibration a couple of times uh, and check that things um, like the resulting calibration uh, is more or less similar. A uh, very short explanation of the sections of the data sets are calibration. Then we have uh, playing, which was basically me playing one of these uh, games. I had some sections using doing Beat Saber, some doing pistol, uh, playing Pistol Whip, and some others playing Thrill of the Fight. Um, 
Then we have any other data sets, which these are various data sets that I was just um, doing different kind of movements that I, so I thought were useful. In Hand Puncher, this is just me pretending to play uh, some kind of boxing game that is a bit more uh, frenetic than thrill, thrill of the Fight. Same with Hand Shooter. And some inspection, uh, some mapping, like just looking around uh, around the, the room to map it. Then three short data sets. This one in particular is very very small, um, so it's just like 100 megabytes. So it's, uh, this one is just for being able to quickly download that data set and just test it. And then there are this this last five are. Uh, very very hard data sets in the sense that we have screens with moving features, we have moving persons, then we move different props around the room, and then we uh, we combine all of those movements um, to really challenge the uh, the algorithm. Okay, so in this video in particular, um, I have. All of the data sets already recorded and both processed, but I have one data set that is very important that I still have not yet uh, post processed. This data set um, was a very long data set. It is a 37 minute session of uh, me playing Beat Cyber. It, it weighs 63 gigabytes. And uh, I think it will be very useful to have a data set like this one um, just to be able to uh, see how a long session, how your algorithm stands against uh, a, long, a very long session. So this, um, this session was recorded and at the end of the session, if you see the readme file of this place, uh, at the end of this section, uh, sorry, at the end of this session, I uh, punched one of the lighthouses, one of the tripods that has the lighthouse uh, by accident, and I just removed those last th uh, 20 seconds in which I I punched the lighthouse. Don't no worry, the lighthouse were okay. The tripod didn't uh, didn't fall off or anything. It just got moved. Um, the thing is, uh, at that point, the the room setup of CVR could be could be affected. So I just uh, did all of the I. Uh, camera calibration, line calibration again, and then start recording again. And so all of the data sets are, are already there, um, are using this new um, room setup. And so what we need to do right now is to, uh, there is, I have some calibration data sets that um, would apply to the, in particular, the, the mock-up data in these calibration analysis would apply to the same time the, this Beat Saber 37 Beat Saber session was recorded. This is pretty convenient since I'll be able to do a camera calibration, an IMU calibration, and be able to show you the process of how I did those. So the first thing I usually do when I need to do camera calibration is going to Firefox and then just uh, searching for the salt documentation. Um, let me see. Sorry. There we go. So, um, yeah, you can go go to either Vladis Lab uh, original upstream basalt version or my own fork of basalt. Um, this will soon be on Monado's uh, namespace. For now, it's on mine, so be worth that. Um, here you can go to the documentation directory and there you have the calibration directory. Um, here you have both the camera calibration uh, command and the camera IMU mockup calibration. We st will start with the camera calibration only. This will only calibrate the two cameras, both the intrinsic and extrinsics. So let's copy that command and try to change the uh, change things as appropriate. In particular, the dataset pad will be the scan calib one. 
Delta type is always Europe. We usually we have an Europe recording mona Europe recorder in Monado, so we always use that. And the the April grid uh, file would be just in your installation directory. If you followed um, if you followed the readme, uh, that directory would be on here, user usr local etc basalt and then april grid but um, mine is in a different place because i modified it a bit so it's over over here it's a, it was a six by six calibration target so the recording is um is of a six by six calibration target we will see that in a moment um Let's see what this JSON has. It's a very simple JSON. It's just saying that it has six columns, six rows. The size of the tag is 30 centimeters. I so I am I will be recording. Uh, I sorry, I recorded a monitor, and that had the PDF shown of the uh, of the April tag, and the yeah that calibration. Uh, sorry. It has the, yeah, I, I zoomed in and out uh, very specifically until I reached a 30 centimeter length of the of each square. Um, where you can find that, the, uh, that PDF, well, you can find it by going to this file over here. And then I have here in the Vive, uh, in the five documentation, I have a quick overview of the calibration process. And in particular, I have a link to the April tag that we will need. The, the, yeah, the April calibration uh, target. And as you can see, I usually just download it and open it with my preferred uh, PDF viewer. And then I just zoom in and out uh, here as precisely as possible and then I just measure in the real world with a real ruler with a real ruler on my monitor I measure the length of these squares um, of course your monitor should be uh, flat you can use a current monitor for this people usually use uh, real calibration targets like they print this and put it on a very uh, very uh, flat surface but it's kind of difficult to do if you don't have the necessary equipment, so I prefer to just use my monitor screen. So going back to the command, we have the epic attack there, and then result path is just uh, some path. Uh, we all save things during the calibration. For this, I will create a create directory, and I will work over here. And there we go. My result path for this will be cam calib one that results. And the cam types um, is the kind of calibration um, of camera model you will use. We will use canal brand um, for basically because this is the usual calibration that that the Valve Index already comes with. Like in the factory settings uh, inside the headset, it already uses a canal brand uh, calibration uh, with four parameters, if I remember correctly. So we'll just stick to that one. And, but we can use other like others like radial tangential eight or double sphere or extended uh, unified camera model and others. We'll use canal brand four for both cameras and we'll type canal brand four two times and then we can just start the process. For the process, we load the data set. Oh, wait. <laughs> All right. I, sorry, now uh, the data set bug is one level above, of course. Okay, that's her again. Uh, we just load the data set. This is the data set. We can see this is me just, the, it was me just recording the monitor. As I, as I say, this is just a monitor that I zoomed in a PDF, PDF viewer and then just measured each uh, the, the side of the squares to be sure they were 30 centimeters. And then I just uh, did different kind of movements to, to cover the entire like range uh, of the camera, the entire image plane, and yeah, yeah, that was kind of it. 
And so yeah, we load the data set, we now press detect corners and wait a bit. The detection of corners will uh, basically try to well, detect corners of the, the, the target, the calibration target. As you can see, there is a bit of blur. Something that will be is kind of curious is that for my bulb index, the left camera is a lot more blurry than my right camera. I tried cleaning it, cleaning the glass, but uh, something seems to happen with that um, that camera that seems to make it a lot more blurry than the right camera. I can say what that is, but that's how my hardware is right now. So yeah, uh, this is still detecting the corners. So you can see, you can see that, for example, some frames. Some frames have the corners detected, but others have not yet processed the corner. So I'll just pause the video and resume it when it's done. Okay, now it's done. Uh, we have all the frames with corners detected. Now we can init the camera intrinsics, init the camera pulses, init the camera extrinsics, and then initialize optimization. And that's it. We can just optimize step by step. This will perform uh, uh, some optimization on the reprojection, reprojection error and try to reduce it. And or we can basically we can do this step by step, or we can just um, press this to optimize until everything converges. And as you can see, this uh, pink. Um, Pink points and the red points will start to get better and better. And there we go, it converged. We'll make it converge with a lower threshold, you know, just in case, and it converged again. And that's it, we can just save the calibration and we are done. The calibration results will be saved here with the calibration that JSON file is having the, the extrinsics uh, with respect to the camera zero. The camera zero will be at the identity pose. The camera, uh, this is the left camera, the right camera will be with respect to that. And then we have the intrinsics of the cameras, the resolution, and yeah, nothing else. Everything else is just uh, hard coded until we do a proper calibration with the IMU. For the IMU calibration, we'll go back to uh, we have the IMU Calib 1, so the idea is to do, use IMU Calib 1 with the calibration done from Cam Calib 1, but you can interchange this, you can use IMU Calib 1 with Cam Calib 2, or IMU Calib 2 with Cam Calib 1, and so on and so forth, but we'll just respect those numbers just, just in case. I mean, not just in case, it's just because. Uh, just because. <laughs> um, okay, for this, we'll go back to the tutorial. And we'll go to, <clears throat> sorry, the tutorial, and then we'll go to the section that says, oh, by the way, this tutorial explains a bit better all of the options. If you are more interested, feel super free to just uh, read, read this. Okay, let's go the, let's do the IMU calibration. Now it's a different command, but I'll calibrate IMU. Um, uh, the data set path will be, the data set we recorded is MU Calib 1. There we go. That's the type is UROC. The April period is the same as before. Plus on install C as hold April period 6 by 6. The result path will be over here. It will be called, let's call it MU Calib 1. That results. And this noise uh, parameters, let's uh, leave them like that. Uh, you can read more about them in the documentation. Okay, so uh, the process is similar, but a bit different. So you load the data set. Oh, wait, something happened. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot. You need to create the inuclip one of the results directory first, and you need to have the calibration, you, the camera calibration you just did, let's put it over here. It will be overwritten, uh, but we need it here. Um, so yeah, let's do that again. Okay. Load data set. Now it loaded. Okay. Okay. Great. 
Uh, yeah, this is a different data set, similar idea, but this time the data set uh, excites the three axes of the I knew, or at least it's more focused on exciting the, those three axes, both for the accelerometer and for the gyroscope with linear rotational movements. And then just, a, it, like you can see, it does a y-axis, z-axis, x-axis, linear movement, then it does a z-axis rotation, uh, y-axis rotation, and x-axis rotation. The axes are in open XR axis, open XR coordinates in my mind. And then you just do a free form uh, movement that excites all axes. Uh, yeah, that's the data set. And then we loaded the data set. Now we will do the same, detect corners. It will, this will take a while. And it started. Something worth noticing is that the Detecting corner is the thing that takes the most time, um, but also once it's done, um, the corners are saved. So you can just close the calibration window and open it again. And the and when you load the data set, the corners will be loaded from the results directory. Okay, I'll pause the video until the corner detection is done. Okay, um, it finished. Let's continue. We now we do it camera poses, in camera IMU, need optimization, and we can start optimizing. And we'll start seeing the this spline trying to this spline trying to match the the gyroscope data. And we can just press optimize until convergence, and it will continually optimize until it converges. I'll pause on this until that happens. Okay, it converged. Um, now I'll reduce the threshold just in case and continue the optimization and pause on again. Okay, it converged. Uh, okay, great. So by this point, we can save the calibration and this is what will happen. Let's see. So let's go to. Let's see, so we have the IMU, here it is. This is the calibration we had for just the camera calibration. And when we press save, let's press save. This is what will happen, just save the calibration. And now we have a different thing. We have, uh, everything is now, the extrinsics are now properly expressed with respect to the IMU instead of uh, to the first camera. And we have a position of each camera with respect to the MU. We have its rotation. We also have the acceleration, an initial uh, accelerometer and gyroscope bias estimation. We don't have, however, oh, sorry, we have, so yeah, we have the, these three initial things. We have an estimation of the frequency of the MU. And yeah, that's it. We don't have the this other numbers which represent the axis alignment um, or the mixing matrix uh, you can also yeah it, it, these are the different um, things that go into the matrix that usually uh, you multiply the IMU uh, measurement to correct from axis misalignment axis scale and things like that and so we can just finish there uh, with the cali calibration file, but we can, um, we won't finish here because there are other options to continue the calibration that you can also see in the, in the documentation. Um, in particular, the options we want to, um, to work on is the, to be able to optimize the, um, the scale, the IMU scale parameters because why? Why is this? Because the IMU measurements I saved for these data sets are not applying any IMU um, correction uh, from the valve index. So they are just raw measurements and estimating the, the, the axis misalignment and scale would be a good idea. Um, you can also estimate the, the offset between the camera and the IMU. 
This is useful. Uh, it is useful, uh, especially for reducing the the error in, in this um, in this calibration. But uh, this offset changes for each data, data set. So this offset will only be useful uh, for this data set. It's not um, something that will always be useful. So we'll activate these two. And also we can optimize for, uh, for the mockup, the motion capture system, which in this case will be our lighthouse uh, setup. And this will optimize two things, the position of the lighthouse, uh, the lighthouse origin, sorry, the yeah, the, 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 the ground truth origin with respect to the April grid. The April grid is considered to be the world and we optimize the, the pose of the lighthouse origin with respect to the April grid. And the other thing that we'll optimize with this checkbox is the, something very important, is the pose of the marker, uh, quote unquote, marker, um, with respect to the MU. So this marker uh, would be um, so something like this in a motion capture system, these things that you put on the thing you want to, to track. But in our case, it will be uh, whatever pose SteamVR is returning. I think SteamVR returns the pose in the middle of the eyes, but I'm not super sure. Um, so it'll probably be will be the pose between the middle of the eyes and the AMU. Um, this this is needed. We need to know this pose because we will uh, later post process the ground truth to um, move that pose into the AMU. So the ground truth is uh, talks with respect to the MU and not some other marker, some other thing that we are not interested in for the data set. Okay, so with these three checkboxes, um, we need to, since we uh, enabled it, this mockup checkbox, we need to init them, initialize the mockup calibration. And that is loading. It's still loading. There we go. It initialized the marker and the, the mock, the, Lighthouse origin, and we can just optimize until it converges. Um, it usually doesn't uh, reach the threshold, so I usually start with a bigger threshold, and then after that, I just uh, start making the threshold lower and pressing this until everything uh, converges as much as possible. Um, it won't. Uh, it usually reaches a po reaches a point in which it doesn't converge anymore, and that's okay. You just will keep iterating over and over on the same numbers, and when that happens, it is okay. You can just stop and, and consider uh, consider the calibration done. I'll do this process. Pause the video for now, and okay, let's see. Maybe this converges in the, without the video. No, I, I'll pause it. I, I'll oh yeah, it converged. Okay, I had. It was a bit lucky, <laughs> lucky I think. Uh, okay, I'll save the calibration, that's the IME calibration, and I'll save the mockup calibration. Those, those are two files, and we are done. Um, we can see now that the the IME calibration we had before is a bit just slightly different because it's considered all of the, these variables. Um, we also we now have numbers in these uh, components of the the mixing matrix of the gyroscope and the accelerometer. Um, and we have uh, a time offset within the camera, um, within the camera timestamps and the time timestamps. But again, this is will be not very useful um, since this offset only applies to this particular data set. And for the mockup calibration, we have the pose of the mockup with respect to the April grid. This is called the WARN, the April grid and the pose of the marker with respect to the IMU. Oh, sorry, this is the pose of the April grid with respect to the, to the lighthouse origin. This is of the marker with respect to the IMU. And we also have something very important, which is, I mean, kind of important, which is the time offset within, between the lighthouse um, time domain, like the, the ground truth ground truth time domain and the new time domain. But again, this is only useful for this particular data set. This will be to need, this will need to be re-estimated and uh, corrected for each data set individually. We'll do that later. Okay, so now that we have a 
proper calibration file, what I'll do now is repeat the process of the camera calibration and IMU calibration for CamCalib2 and IMU Calib2. And I'll show to you, uh, I'll pause the video and do that uh, in the background and then uh, I'll come back. Oh, one more thing. Um, while I was doing the new calibration, I had some issues uh, with the, uh, the com convergence of the image calibration, and I remembered that um, there are some. I started suspecting of the dataset, and I remember. So this is probably useful to mention. There are some tools that uh, the XRT Slam metrics repository. There are many tools for uh, everything that I do that is just like scripts or, or things like that. That, um, that are useful in some sense are uh, uploaded here. And there is, um, for the dataset recording, I introduced this, introduced this new Euroc operations, uh, um, Euroc operation, Euroc operations uh, script, which has a lot of commands that you can do for trimming datasets, for getting the duration of datasets. Um, and things like that, and information, um, and yeah, and whatnot. Um, in particular, it has a verify command that allows you to verify the data set. Uh, right now it's very rough, but this verify command runs a bunch of asserts that should uh, should happen in each data set. And if it doesn't assert, if the assertion fails, it just tells you it failed and you need to manually see why it failed. But it basically is telling you that the data set has something that is not consistent and that you will need to uh, fix it. In this case, there are, uh, this, this assertion is telling me that there is an image, uh, this image, uh, this frame that is not present in the CSV file. This happened because the uh, Euro recording tool had some bugs uh, at the time. They are already fixed, but uh, when I recorded this particular data set, had, it had uh, some particular bugs that are not very important. Like it, it won't affect the final data set, it just affects some of the corner cases. And I, can, and I will proceed and manually uh, fix all of the errors that the verify command uh, tells me to fix. So after uh, verifying the datasets and fixing the different issues of them, um, now when we run the verify script, we just see a couple of warnings that are not super, uh, these are not asserts, this warning, these warnings can be ignored. Um, so now all of the datasets uh, can be used and I already uh, did the calibration with the second dataset. It turns out the the, the data set didn't have any issues, it just uh, didn't converge, that can happen, so uh, that it's expected. But now we have a second calibration and mock-up calibration file, and it's useful because we can now compare the two calibration files and see the differences. Uh, we can see they're mostly, uh, mostly similar, like at least uh, up to some precision, maybe mi a millimeter pre precision. We have like the same position, almost the same uh, orientation. Um, as you can see, uh, up to two or three digits is the same. The intrinsics are all also very similar, and the IMU uh, intrinsics are also kind of similar, although these are more, um, these have more difference. And the time offset will be quite a lot different because it depends on the data set, but you can ignore this. And for the mock up calibration, it happens something similar. The, the uh, mock up world transformation is similar, except for uh, here the quaternion is negated, but uh, it is essentially the same quaternion. And the AMU marker uh, happens the same, it happens the same for it. Uh, the pulse is very similar, and again, the mockup time offset can vary a lot more. Here is like two milliseconds, and here is 1.2. All in all, we now have uh, calibration files that uh, were checked that even with different calibrations, they are similar. So we can just use, for example, the result from the first calibration. Um, and we can now proceed to uh, correct the ground truth timestamps 
and the camera timestamps. We'll start with the ground truth. For this, we'll go to the RealSense uh, document. This might get moved later, but in this document, we have the documentation for the basalt, um, basalt time alignment utility. The idea of this utility is that you get some trajectory, in particular the trajectory from the ground truth in this case, and the IMU measurements, in particular the gyroscope measurements, and you compare the rotational velocity of the trajectory with the gyroscope measurements. And then this tool um, just optimizes the the off, uh, optimizes an offset between the two the two uh, inputs, the trajectory and the gyroscope data, so that the rotational velocity and the gyroscope uh, aligned as best as possible. And so that's what we would need to do. We need to copy and paste this command. In particular, we will do this for the, um, the Beat Saber. Uh, the Beat Saber dataset that has 40 minutes. Um, so the command we'll, we'll need to, to put here would be Beat Saber seven minutes. Um, that is type is Europe. The calibration file will be the calibration we just did, which is say, we're saved here in clip one, version adjacent, and the mockup calibration is in the same place. It is calibration. Um, so the the problem, uh, something that will probably happen is that this data set being 37 minutes will be too big. Um, I'll try running it, uh, but I'll pause the video. Um, it might not run. If that happens, we'll try to slice the, this data set into small 30 second data sets and then run the, run the tool uh, on those data sets instead. I'll try running it on, on this big data set and uh, I'll pause the video meanwhile. Something that is very important to notice is that the, the ground truth, uh, the ground, ground truth data should be in a folder called mocap zero. Um, and in this case, by default, Monado saves it on a GT folder instead. So let's uh, let's rename that that directory. And uh, the tool, once it's it's finished, will create a GT directory with the with the poses corrected to be from the marker to the IMU, and the timestamps corrected as well. Since I don't have a way to tell uh, whether this will work, meanwhile, I'll show you the, the other alternative I'll do if this doesn't, uh, if running the time alignment on the entire dataset doesn't work. I just split the dataset. Uh, I use the, the get duration command to get that the dataset is 36, not five minutes. And then I just split did a couple of sub data sets with the trim command. Uh, I did bit server zero at zero minutes, at 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and 35 minutes. Use data set of 60 seconds. Um, this is the starting second, this is the end second, and start 600 seconds, so be 10 minutes, 1200, 1800, and so on. Um, the idea is to then run the basalt time aligning uh, the same command, but on each of these data sets. This is uh, one of the one minute data set has, has just finished, and this is the kind of graph you will see. Um, this is a one minute uh, sequence, and you can see the mockup rotational velocity and the gyroscope data overlaid on top of each other. If you zoom in in one of those, um, you can see the lighthouse data is um, has a lot of uh, small little, little corrections that happen when the lighthouse do doesn't. Uh, post of the uh, post graph optimization or something like that and you have the gyroscope which is a bit smoother and then you just uh, the, this tool just makes them aligned as best as possible and as such it gives you um, the offset it needed to for them to align in this case the offset was 2.292 milliseconds um, the idea now is to see if 
this uh, offset is similar in the other small datasets and also in the bigger dataset command. One thing that is worth uh, noticing is that you have um, there is um, one option for the basal time alignment command uh, which saves you the this one uh, the output um, it outputs the, the JSON with the time offset. It's pretty useful for automatizing this uh, when you run it for multiple datasets. So after one of these um, is done, um, and when you are seeing the graph, um, again, you can see the rotational velocities uh, overlaid on top of the gyroscope measurements. You can just save, uh, press this button, save a line dataset that will uh, add a, a directory called GT that will be the same as the, as the mockup zero directory, but it will have all the timestamps corrected and the uh, marker pose transformed into the IMU pose. So I did that for all of the datasets already. And just in case, I saved all of the offsets um, for each one of the datasets. The full 37 minute dataset finished and the, the offset that was optimized optimized it was 2.7 milliseconds but if you see here uh, the five one minute data sets that I took in different places of the, of the data set um, each one of those have a different time offset uh, slightly different time, off time offset when it starts it's about 2.3 milliseconds then we go to 2.45 2.75 3 milliseconds 3.25 so uh, it seems that the offset starts increasing um, but unfortunately, we uh, we won't be able to take that into account. So we'll just apply this offset, um, and this will be something we'll need to deal with and, and be aware of when we use the full 37-minute dataset. Um, if we want to use slices, it might be better to uh, re-estimate the the ground truth offsets. The last part of the dataset post-processing will be to um, get the camera timestamps to align with IMU timestamps. This is only needed for the valve index because again, we don't, um, being the driver, being a reverse engineer driver, we don't really have the real hardware timestamps from the cameras, so we we'll need to align them. Um, for this, we'll use this same tool uh, but we'll do some tricks. Um, in particular, we'll run visual geometry. Uh, we'll use Pascal to estimate the just be, with visual geometry with the new. We'll estimate a trajectory um, for some short data sets. Probably we'll reuse these data sets that we took, and we'll just uh, use those trajectories to. Uh, we'll fit those trajectories as as if they were ground truth to this tool and we'll use the IMUs. We might need to switch the IMU components around a bit and just so that the tool works properly. And we'll, uh, with this puzzle time alignment tool, we'll get some offset that we can use. The command we'll use for this is the regular basalt BIO command. Uh, we won't show the UI. Um, we could, in case we want to debug it, but we won't do it because we want to do uh, multiple of these data sets at the same time. Um, that, that's the type, of, it's always EROC. The can calibration is the, the one from IMU Calib 1. Um, the config path will be one of the basalt installation directories that uh, is uh, specifically tailored for visual autometry, the V01. It's going to be found in the repository and it's installed. Um, for the use IMU flag, we'll disable that so that we only do visual ergonometry. 
the, we will pass the safe trajectory as Euroc uh, directory uh, flag so that when it ends, it saves the trajectory as an Euroc CSV file. The dataset path uh, in this case uh, will be this is the full dataset, but we'll do it for all the datasets. And then we'll move the trajectory that CSV file generated into uh, another name, more descriptive name. And we'll do that for each dataset that we want to run. What will probably happen in the long data set is that, uh, so visual elementary is super not very uh, robust, so it will be probably crash. We won't be able to finish the full data set. So having this smaller data sets will be useful for that so that the autometry works on these ones. And so yeah, we'll run, we'll run all of this so that we get that trajectory, those trajectory file, files. By this point, all of the trajectories were generated and all of those trajectories were moved into a mockup zero folder in, inside each dataset. And I already ran the basal time alignment tool with uh, this new dataset that has the new mockup zero uh, uh, fake mockup zero of the ETA, which is the estimated trajectory. Um, the procedure is the same. The only difference is that you don't save the, the run truth because uh, you don't want to save a new run truth. You are only interested in the resulting offset. Um, in this case, the resulting offsets for each data set were, were as follow. Um, for the calibration file, for the camera calibration data sets, there's almost no offset. Uh, I'm elevation as well, I'm elevation too, there is 1.3 milliseconds. And something interesting ha happens for the long 40 minutes data set. Uh, it starts almost with no, with no offset, but it uh, starts going up all the way up to almost 1 millisecond. Um, when you run you run the alignment in the entire data set. The result is 0 0.4 milliseconds. So this is the one we will use. But again, it seems that there is a constant drift of the, of, of the offset between the clocks. So keep this in mind when you are running your own, uh, your own system. You might need to uh, account for this drift in the time offsets. So yeah, uh, now we just want to apply this um, <coughs> all of this offset to the to the different uh, camera CSV files. In, we only have uh, these two data CSV and data extra CSV. All the extra files have uh, a bit more extra information, but the regular Europe file is a data CSV file. And these other are just copies I made for now, just in case uh, something goes wrong and I need to re recover them. Um, but yeah, for applying the offset to the to this to the data.csv files of each camera, I'll just use another tool in the Euro operations script. This tool is called cam offset ts. I'll just pass the, all of these offsets, which uh, let's check there is some order. One, two, I need one and two, bit saver is here to 35 and then 57. Perfect. And then we just uh, run this script, um, let me pause. Once this is ready, uh, we now have, as you can see, different, uh, the PNG file differs from the timestamp. The timestamp is, uh, has the opposite applied. In fact, if you, for example, for this data set, it's over 35, if you compute the difference between the two, it's this number, which is exactly the number of the offset for that data set. And that is applied to all the timestamps. So now our data set is ready. Uh, all the four data sets are ready. We have the ground truth aligned, the camera data aligned. Uh, I will only delete these extra files that I have for backup and we should be ready to go to upload. Oh. One more thing before, uh, one more transformation we should be applying to our datasets before uploading uh, is the following. So in our calibration files, we have 
these uh, calib acceleration bias, accelerometer bias and cal calibration gyroscope bias uh, parameters. So um, it is common for IMU measurements to apply some kind of transformation to correct for uh, factory uh, misalignments and scale problems with different axes. Um, so what Basalt provides is, uh, you can see in, in the documentation page for, for Basalt headers, uh, you can see, for example, the gyroscope the documentation, the, um, the calibration file has 12 parameters. These 12 parameters, they match these 12. And the way they are applied is as follows. You get a, a, a raw gyroscope measurement and you apply this matrix over here uh, and this bias. And that's what gets you a calibrated uh, IMU measurement. Even though the bias is re-estimated over time during, uh, during regular operation, but you start with an initial bias, which will be these three numbers. For the accelerometer, something similar happens, but you have uh, less variables uh, are provided. This is for a specific reason that I, I will try to link in the description of the video. Um, but it doesn't come, to, it's not important right now. The thing is that um, not all systems uh, provide a way to tell them the, these parameters. So many systems uh, already expect a well calibrated uh, IMU file, like the IMU samples should be well calibrated. So uh, what we'll do is, um, I already did it here, but the idea is that we will have an, a data that raw the CSV, which has the raw uh, IMU samples. Uh, this is what we had before. And then we'll pass through this Europe operation script, the apply IMU calibration script, in which we pass the calibration JSON file, which has all of these uh, optimized uh, parameters. And then we, uh, we also pass where we would like to save the 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 IMU file, but calibrated. Like the idea is that we will take this same IMU file and then just apply the transformations from the calibration adjacent file in the same way that the basal documentation applies it. So yeah, that's the idea. And now we get just regular data CSV files that ha have been calibrated, like the, the these transformations have been applied to both accelerometer and gyroscope measurements. And yeah, I already applied that transformation to everything. And now we are finally ready to upload the data sets. Okay, hopefully the video has been useful and you now have a better idea on how the data sets work and how the data sets came to be and the different post-processing steps they went through. Um, if you have any doubt on the data sets or, or, or anything else, feel free to reach out on Monado's Discord on, or on the data set uh, issue tracker. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching.